All right, welcome back. In this video, we are resolving this problem that we've already solved. Um, there's another video on uh, doing this example using the moment area method, but in this case, the spin is that we want to do it with the moment area method by parts, uh, again, to find the midpoint deflection and slope at C. So if we look at the work from the previous video when we did this, it's, uh, it's got quite a bit here, so we'll go right up to the top. It's the same system here. What we did is we basically drew on the free body diagram. We generated the shear force diagram for the entire beam. Uh, from there, we figured out the bending moment diagram. From there, we divided the bending moment diagram by EI to get the M over EI diagram, basically just converting these values. Um, and then from there, what we're doing is we, we basically were taking the area between B and C. Um, we're, we're considering this area in here. Uh, when we were doing the first and second moment theorems uh, to figure out the difference in the tangential deviation and the relative slopes here. So hopefully this is familiar to you and hopefully you've seen this video. If not, um, I'll put a link to it in the description or, or uh, up here or something like that. Um, but this time we're going to solve it around uh, using the moment area method by parts and we just want to make sure that we get the same answer. So when we do by parts, all we have to do is we split the structure out into, uh, we, we, we redraw the structure as many times as we need to, so there's just one load acting on it at a time, like this. So this actual structure is equal to the sum of this plus this. And when we look at that, what we want to do is we want to basically draw each one's shear force diagram independently, and then we want to draw their bending moment diagrams too. And then because we are working with the method of superposition, then the actual bending moment diagram of the system can be represented by just adding these two together on the same diagram. Now, if you look here, we would expect the midpoint, the actual moment, to be the sum of these. So positive 80 minus 20, so 60 kilonewton meters right in the middle. Um, if we just go back up to what we had in the previous video, um, we were getting 60 kilonewton meters right in the middle. So this is just the sum. If we added up every single point uh, on those two lines that we have, that is what we are getting. All right, so now what we do is we want to draw the M over EI diagram, which is literally just a copy of the bending moment diagram. Um, and we're just going to come down here and we're going to divide every point on the graph by EI. So we write M over EI and then 80 kilonewton meters divided by EI is 0 0.004 meters to the minus 1 and then minus 20 kilonewton meters divided by EI is negative 0 0.001 meters to the minus 1. Cool. So now we have uh, we have the, the basically just the critical points that we need on the M over EI diagram and if we go back and look at what the question was we were using the moment area method by parts to find the midpoint deflection and the slope at C. So when we're thinking about where to place our, our bounds for the first and second moment area theorem, we're going to pick the same ones that we did in the first video. Basically the midpoint here, I believe it's uh, point B, and then, uh, and then C here, because when we find the tangents at those, uh, the tangent at B we know is going to be horizontal because of the symmetry of the problem. Um, and then when we find the tangent, uh, the angle of the tangent of C relative to B, that's the actual angle of theta C, which was part of the question. And then when we find the tangential deviation here, um, again, the way that this is set up, that this tangential deviation is going to equal the actual displacement uh, of the beam at the midpoint. So the difference in height basically from this point up to here. Okay, so when we did this in the last video, um, we, we took the area, of, so between a between B and C, so it's this area, this area, and this one up up here. Um, so we need to do the same thing uh, in when we're doing this by parts. So basically we're going to be taking, let's just draw it on. Um, we want to be taking the area uh, that's on the right-hand side between point, point B and point C. So when we look at this, there's two areas. It's a composite area in total. So there's area one up here, and there's area two down here. Now area one is um, is the area of half a parabola, and so that just ends up being two thirds base height, which gives us 0.00533 radians. Now when we look at area two here, it's just the area of a triangle, so that gives us negative 0.001 radians. And so then when we use the first moment area theorem uh, to basically just sum up the areas between B and C on the M over EI diagram, that's just equal to uh, A1 plus A2. And uh, if we add those together, we get 0.00433 radians. And because it's positive, that's indicating that our angle is up 
like that from the horizontal at point C. All right, so now let's move on to the second moment area theorem, which is T, um, in this case, it's TC with respect to B, the tangential deviation of C with respect to B is just going to be equal to x bar 1 times a1 plus x bar 2 times a2 and we only have two composite or we only have two shapes in here that we're adding up so we just stop there so x bar 1 the uh, is the distance of the centroid of this half parabola over to point c and uh, the expression for that x bar 1 is just 5 8 base. You can find that in any like a uh, centroid table in a mechanics and materials or a structural analysis book. Um, so that's 5 eighths base, so that is 5 eighths times 2 meters, and that's going to give us 1.25 meters. Um, so for x bar 2, it's just the distance uh, of the from the centroid to the short edge of a triangle, um, which is just 2 thirds base. And our base is 2, so this is going to be 1.333 meters. So when we throw this into the expression, we get 0 0.00533 meters, which is also equal to just 5.33 millimeters. So TCB, the tangential deviation of C with respect to B, is 5.33 millimeters above B, basically the tangent due to B. So we got this 0 0.00433 radians, 5.33 millimeters. If we go up and compare that to what we got in the, uh, the problem when we did it with just the regular moment area method, we get the same things. So we had 0 0.00433 radians and 5.33 millimeters. And again, just a last comment here on um, the reason we're picking A and B here. So when we draw on these tangents, we uh, the tangential deviation equals the deflection uh, at the midpoint of the structure, and then also this angle here, theta C with respect to B, is equal to theta C, because if you extended this tangent line, which is the slope at point C, down like this, when it crosses that horizontal, it's at exactly the same angle that theta C would be on. All right, guys, um, so there you go. That's uh, one example solved with the regular moment area method and then solved again with the moment area method by parts. So uh, you can see often with moment area method by parts, um, typically the math is easier with these ones, like the centroids, uh, the distances from centroids to um, to the, the point that we're taking the, the measurements from is typically easier, you know, compared to uh, in here we were having to, you know, it was a little bit more work, but depends on the problem. It's not always easier to do by parts, but uh, now you know how to do both, and so it's up to you to decide which one you want to use. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.